First of all, let's get the matter of introductions out of the way. If you don't Bob Garst and Charlie Thomas, here goes. This is Bob Garst. If you see him again this winter, he won't be wearing a hat then either. And here's Charlie Thomas whose constant attention to growing and processing seed corn is your crop insurance for next year. The result of this partnership is an institution dedicated to the production of superior seed corn, the largest and most modern plant in existence. More than 100,000 bushels of Pioneer hybrid seed were dried, sorted, graded and bagged here this year. The warehouse, 300 feet long and with a capacity of more than 40,000 bushels, was recently built to accommodate the increasing volume. When I met you a moment ago, I knew you were here to find out the how and why of hybrid corn, and how and why its use will put more money in your pocket. But before we see what has been done with hybrid corn, let's take a look at a field of open pollinated corn. I think you'll recognize it. Maybe we can refresh your memory about the faults and the flaws of open pollinated corn. Anywhere in the corn belt, fields of open pollinated corn greet the eye. This one isn't a bad field either. In fact, it's pretty good, but it won't bear close inspection. Garst and Thomas have thousands of visitors every fall who insist upon seeing the difference between open pollinated corn and pioneer hybrid corn. No worse than the average field, yet there's a decided lack of stiffness here which is notably present in the hybrid fields you're to visit later. You will observe a general lack of stiffness and style. Looks like the cows had been in the corn. There's an appearance of shagginess, due mostly to fallen stalks. Stalks that break before the ears mature cause chaffy and rotten ears, not sound corn, and not conducive to large yields. The stalks upon which these ears were produced went down early, with resultant rottenness of the ear. Limber stalks are easily blown down and are difficult to pick either by hand or by machine. When the wind is accompanied by rain, the fallen stalk attempts to come up again, and in so doing, forms a gooseneck. Another reason for stalks falling is a poor, weak root system, a typical fault of open pollinated corn. Later, you will contrast this root with the heavy pioneer hybrid root. The lack of uniformity in height of ears of open pollinated corn slows down picking materially. For this reason, corn picking contests are practically always held in hybrid fields, where the contestants show to the greatest advantage. The uneven position of ears seen here does not permit rapid or efficient husking. Another fault of open pollinated corn is the fact that the ears themselves drop off so easily on windy days. A mechanical corn picker can't pick up these ears. A human corn picker doesn't like to. After the corn picker has been through the open pollinated field, the job of picking up fallen ears yet remains. This extra task is wholly unnecessary in the pioneer hybrid fields, which you'll soon see. 10% of the corn was left on the ground, too much to leave but a lot of work to get, and here's what you finally do get. Ununiform size, shape, and quality. The reason for the lack of uniformity and vigor in the field that we've just looked at is that you don't know which pollen grain pollinated each separate kernel. In other words, you don't know who the daddy was. No one would be so foolish as to try to improve livestock without selecting the finest sire. The reason you get a prize-winning bull or a good boar is because some breeder has selected his grandparents with the greatest of care. Now let's take a look at a field of pioneer hybrid corn where we too know the father and the grandfather. In fact, we know all of the ancestry for 10 generations back. 
the crowd gets larger. You know what they say about building a better mousetrap. This is daily routine during harvest time at the Garston Thomas plant in Coon Rapids, where visitors are welcome. Seeing is believing. Here's an example of what Pioneer Hybrid Seed Corn will do for you. There's an ear on every stalk. The ears are at a uniform height and the stalks are standing up stiff, straight and strong. And the ears will bear plenty of inspection too. Again, the uniformity of height is extremely noticeable. The product of two adjacent hills re-emphasizes the uniformity of the ears for size, type, and quality. They're a noonday meal for any horse. Pioneer produces corn of real quality. It's good feed, and it markets at top prices. For those of you who have marveled at 100 bushel per acre yields, you're now seeing 110 bushels to the acre. What do you think of this neighborhood of healthy ears, called the Gold Coast by one visitor? 110 bushels to the acre means 8,800 pounds of ear corn. It takes sturdy stalks to hold up this kind of a crop. How beautifully they stand. We can even see angle-wise or crosswise through the cornfield. Take a look down that aisle, a pathway to prosperity. And what's more, the ears don't fall off when the wind blows. Remember how easily they fell in the other field? Smoke that one in your pipe, mister. Corn can't stand up without a root system either. Go ahead, pull it out. It can be done, but it takes plenty of heft. These roots go down where the plant food and moisture are. They ought to produce corn. They've had plenty of opportunity to absorb a lot of nourishment from the soil, and they did produce a lot of corn. Roots tell a lot of the story of Pioneer Hybrid Corn. Which one of these two roots do you think has the best chance to get down where the moisture and plant food are? Which one will hold the stalk the straightest? A Pioneer Hybrid Root is four times as large. The mechanical corn picker also gets a real chance to do a good job in hybrid corn. Sooner or later, all farmers will be using the corn picker. The heavy root system, sturdy straight stalks, and strong shanks of Pioneer hybrids are well adapted to mechanical corn picking. This is corn raising reduced to a science. In a few minutes, that wagon will be back full of corn from four rows, 70 rods long. When picking corn by hand or mechanically, how convenient it is to find the ear at a uniform height on every stalk. There are two inches difference in the height of ears. Just to show that these individual hills aren't unusual for this pioneer field, let's pick three consecutive hills. How uniform they are in height. How nicely they break out. And what fun to pick these golden ears. And man, what a profit. Three adjacent hills, nine big, fine quality ears, harder to hold than to husk. Over here, the corn pickers already made one round, 70 rods long, and here's the take. Hold on there, old boy. Oh, but then we can't blame you at that. They'd never believe you back home if you didn't have some corn to back it up. And over in the corner of the field, the loaded wagons are dumped. The corn elevated onto waiting trucks and headed for the processing plant. In one day, three men with a corn picker have picked 2,000 bushels from 19 acres of land and loaded it onto the trucks. Again, we repeat, Corn raising reduced to a science. And so to town it goes, and while we string along behind, let's glance at the field that was picked with the sturdy straight pollen rows left standing. The corn from these pollen rows is never used for seed, but is later picked and fed. Back 
Back at the plant, our cargo of potential seed corn gets ready to face its judgment day. It looks mighty fine out there in the fields, and it would be excellent in any grain market or feedlot. But it must undergo many severe and exacting processes before it becomes pioneer hybrid seed corn, the quality hybrid. Truckload after truckload of carefully bred corn is hauled from farms of nine counties in the vicinity of the Garston Thomas plant. Corn that has been bred and grown under vigilant supervision of pioneer experts. The crowds of visitors are always interested in studying the many reasons for pioneer supremacy. Good, substantial businessmen these, all interested in learning why Pioneer can afford to extend its famous replanting agreement to all purchasers, to find out why Pioneer can back up performance with an agreement that makes its hybrid seed as good as a gilt-edged bond. A Niagara of golden wealth pours over the top and down the conveyor belt into the large bins beneath. Cream of the crop, this corn, but still only embryo seed until it has been processed thoroughly to fulfill the rigid requirements Pioneer demands. Only 60% of these ears are good enough to become Pioneer hybrid seed corn. The rest will be fed on Bob Garst's and Charlie Thomas's farms. In the sorting plant, another shift leaves, another comes on duty, and the ear corn faces its first acid test. Three shifts a day, 230 men to a shift. Just a cross-section of the large number of men whose skill and hard work make possible a hybrid like Pioneer. Approximately 8,000 bushels are handled in this sorting plant each day. Only one variety is inspected at one time to ensure against any mistake in classifying. Each ear is individually examined. Every damaged kernel is removed. All off-type ears are discarded, and only the choice corn is dropped in the box for seed. Inferior or light ears are rejected. No farmer ever sorted his own seed with greater care. From the hundreds of skilled workmen, farm-minded young men from Nebraska, Missouri, Iowa, and Kansas emerge the checkers, those lynx-eyed inspectors who re-examine every ear and every kernel to make sure there has been no oversight. In the words of Amos and Andy, check and double-check. This careful sorting and resorting is another reason why pioneer corn grows uniformly and vigorously. Uniformity is elemental in quality hybrid corn. It took many seasons of breeding to get ears like these. They still have a long, hard path to go, but so far they have proved beyond doubt to have quality and breeding. The choice corn that survives this series of inspections is conveyed directly from the sorted piles by way of a conveyor belt system which transports it to the root of the large drying bins and thence into the cribs below. Portable dryers along the side of the cribs force hot air through the corn. Six oil burning fronts with fans driven by 60 horsepower motors maintain a constant temperature of 110 degrees, just like a hot wind off the Kansas wheat field. The constant hot air pressure reduces the moisture content to 12% and assures splendid germination later, guarding the seed against possible danger from cold weather. The corn, now sorted, checked, and dried, and already over some tough hurdles, proceeds on its way up the ladder of success to the corn sheller. At full capacity, these shellers can shell 1,000 bushels an hour. On the top floor of the grading plant, the sorted, dried, and shelled corn starts its home stretch trip through the main plant, the postgraduate course in processing that adds finishing touches to a truly great seed corn. Several sets of sorting drums separate the large kernels from the small kernels, 
and the peewee and cracked kernels are removed. Graders on the floor below divide the large round from the large flat and the small round from the small flat, making four kernel sizes. Accurate grading permits accurate planting, which means uniform stands. This mercury-treated superior seed corn has finished the long race and is now worthy of the name Pioneer. Finally receiving the award of merit, the familiar trademark of Pioneer hybrid seed corn. Every sack has been stamped to show the kernel size and variety. The particular variety being sacked today happens to be another Pioneer champion, a Banner Trophy winner in the Iowa State yield tests, a masterpiece in scientific seed selection. Sealed by sowing, the bag contains genuine Pioneer hybrid seed corn, the real McCoy, a perfect seed that has successfully withstood the many tests and processes. This seal is for the customer's protection. When Pioneer corn is sealed in the bag, your next year's banner crop is as good as in the bag too. It's bred and selected to produce prize yield. Seven different varieties, each adapted to a particular area, each one suited to varying climatic conditions, are stored in the three large Garston Thomas warehouses until delivery. Can there be any wonder, with generations of breeding and the painstaking processing that each kernel of Pioneer corn receives, why the famous Pioneer replanting agreement can be offered with the purchase of each bushel of corn? This replanting agreement ensures that if for any reason, including worm damage and floods, you have to replant Pioneer hybrid corn, the seed for replanting is free. Pioneer, first, oldest and largest producer of commercial hybrids, can give you this assurance only because its time-tested results have removed all the guesswork from corn growing. When you buy Pioneer, you get more for your money. It costs a dollar an acre more to plant Pioneer hybrid seed, and normally it increases the yield around 14 bushels or $7. In other words, it nets you $6 an acre more profit. And now I want to thank you for your interest. Many of you have seen our processing plant and visited our seed field and can vouch for everything you've seen here today and more too. For the rest, we've tried to bring them out into Mohammed to show you how Pioneer hybrid corn is produced and what it will do for you. Next year, we trust you will join those thousands who know that Pioneer, the quality hybrid, is the surest way to happy harvest.